Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Rule 34 podcast. I'm your host, Jack, joined by my fellow co host, Dominic, just Castillo. So, it's been. How long has it been since we recorded last episode, Dom? Uh, two weeks. We missed last week. Yeah. Right. See, I think I jinxed it because in that episode I said we've been pretty consistent, and literally the next day after, we or the next week after we didn't record. Yeah, but I mean, I I think it's because uh, we messed ourselves up with, because of how good of an episode episode fifty was. We struggled to figure out how to follow it up, you know. Yes, yes, yes. But so, how have you been during all this time, though? Um, personally, I feel like my, um, how do you call it? I I think I've been getting that, uh, like that, how do you call it? That mentality of like, every day is just a constant loop of work and then school and then work and then school. Mm. Like, 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 I feel like my mental health is deteriorating very slowly. Okay, I guess. But But I mean, it is what it is. It's about the bread. At the end of the day. Yeah, I get you. But, yeah, other than that, um, I think, I mean, I no, nothing else really happened. Yeah, I think, uh, once this whole pandemic thing calms down, it, 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 obviously it won't fully help it because, you know, it's still going to be the same thing of, you know, doing school and work. But, uh, you're at least going to be able to, like, fit in things like going out and stuff and, like, using up your free time rather than how it is, like, right now, you know? Yeah. I feel like I've been, how do you call it, able to use this time sort of wisely throughout this entire year because we've already been an entire year ever since we got the notification that we get to have a two-week spring break. Now it's gone to a, an entire year of a spring break. Yeah, what's so, it called? Uh, when it hit the day, everyone was like, it's been a year since. Pretty much, yeah. But I mean, uh, I guess all went well, sort of. So far, um, nothing's bad been pretty much going on. I bought a PlayStation 2. Uh, I told you that, Jack. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been working absolutely fine. Absolutely good. Um, unfortunately, my cat scratched my television. I was going to bring that up. I was going to say there's two things that have occurred within the past, like, two weeks that uh, you can tell the podcast as to why also uh, your your, uh, your previous weeks haven't gone well. There's that story and the other one. But, oh, yeah, and the, the thing at work. Yeah, but yeah. We'll, we'll talk about your cat for right now. Yeah. Yeah, so, in Dominic's perspective, it's a lot of damage, but when he sent us a picture to us, from based on the photo, it just looks like a little bit of damage. Like, it, look, it literally just looks like a couple pixels are messed up on the screen. Yeah, but it's like, how do you call it? I think it's like those situations, kind of like with an iPhone, you know, when you, sc- you crack, accidentally crack your screen a little bit, you think it's just a little crack. But, like, further on, it's going to keep on cracking more and more. Mm. So I feel like it's gonna be one of those situations. Cause, cause the the cat, how do you call it? Uh, I think she she was biting at the moment. I wasn't I wasn't here. My brother was here, but uh, at the cat my, at the time the cat like stuck her like her her teeth into mm. like the 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 screen. So now you could physically feel like like something tearing off. Oh, okay. And so it results in like dead pixels. Or I think I think it's called dead pixels, in which the actual thing doesn't you know properly align with the rest of like what the TV is meant to be showing. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, it's very small, it's very insignificant, but I don't you know, I'm probably gonna have to buy like a like a screen protector for the thing, and those like are like one hundred and fifty to three hundred bucks on their own. Yeah, I feel. You should wait. How do you call it? Does your dog Dodger like mess around with like TV appliances or like anything that's like electronic? He techies? never has, 
And at the same time, everything's also too high up for him to even reach. Oh, okay, I got you. Does he not jump up? A jump up on stuff? Uh, not really. Especially because okay. they're they're too like I said they're too high for him to like even try and even like yeah. reach up to. Yeah. This cat can can jump really high, surprisingly. It's funny you brought up Dodger and immediately he came and lied down next to me. You know? This cat is just walking around, acting like it didn't just almost <laughs> possibly have a one thousand dollar television. <laughs> Not paying rent, not paying, it's just there, bro. Living rent free in your home and getting to damage everything without having to pay. Exactly. What'd you tell him yesterday? You're costing us money. It, it literally is. But I mean, we, you know, we gotta do, we gotta do, we gotta take care of it. Yeah, you gotta take care of it one way or another. Mm-hmm. In ways that PETA may or may not approve when I'm playing. That's true. But uh, yeah. do you do you want uh, do you want to tell the podcast about uh your work story? Uh yeah sure. Um, this happened what two days ago now? Three days ago? Yeah, Three it was days on ago. Tuesday because we were making a whole joke about how it was on a Tuesday night. Yeah, so it was on a Tuesday night, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna go into explicit details, but so it was just Tuesday night. Uh, it was like what around like nine ten nine twenty at night. We were already cleaning. So we couldn't take as many orders because, you know, if we were to take orders, then we got to clean everything else again. Yeah. So, uh, but then this one guy came in and asked for some barbecue ribs because we sell that mm-hmm. like a, in like a small quantity, right? And um, I call it, he said, how much time they're going to be taking? And I said around like 15 minutes because we have to probably let them simmer down. Like properly cook. We don't want to like serve raw food. Um, and then he gave me like a smirk, no, not like a smirk, like a, how do you call it? Like an angry, like weirded out face, like saying like 15 minutes, like what? And I probably, you know, I explained to him why it took him, why it would take 15 minutes. And he said, okay, but the, the you know, we better provide extra just because it's 15 minutes. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, okay. So time goes by, uh, they're ready, right? They're, they're, they're ready. They're hot and ready. Uh, you know, Throw in a bunch of barbecue sauce just to, you know, make it look good. And uh, he comes in, gets the the barbecue ribs. We give it to him. But then he starts, like, knocking hard on, like, our, on our window. Uh-huh. Like, knocking hard, right? But, uh, like, in, like, in the most disgruntled voice, like, he starts asking, how long were they ready for? And I said, like, uh, a little bit less than a minute. But, like, the, the, like, I was terrified, bro. Like, because he was a huge, he was a big guy, big guy, like strong, like, like how do you call it, um, strong man type build. You know what strong men are, Jack? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, those, like those who live like 500 pounds in like one go. Yeah. Like he had that type of like, like body build. Mm. Bro, bro, dude, he was just looking down on me like if I was going to be like squashed like a bug. And, and then I, and then how do you call it? He wanted a soda right afterwards. And he paid... He paid for a soda, right? Like a $2 soda. And then he wanted another soda for free. And, you know, I, I did I couldn't say no because if I were to say no, I'd probably be dead. <laughs> and so I just gave him like a $2 soda. We just lost two bucks in profit. It wasn't much. But, um... And then he left angry because of the freaking barbecue ribs. And now I just can't imagine getting mad over barbecue ribs. From a pizza place. From a pizza place in some random location at a strip mall at on a Tuesday night, bro. On a Tuesday night. Getting mad over barbecue ribs on a Tuesday night, bro. I'm getting mad at a 5'7", barely out of high school kid because your barbecue ribs were what? what I, I, like, even hearing the story, I just don't understand what he was mad about. I think it was just meant that he wanted the ribs on time, even though they were on time. He was just like a minute late. And so, I I don't know. Yeah, it seems like uh. it's more on him. Than... <laughs> okay. 
See, this is this is where visuals would be really good. Uh, so as I mentioned, the dog's laying down next to me, right, Don? Right. And I have my sketchbook and all my drawings right next to me as well. And he just randomly comes to lie down next to it, and then he just kicked all of it off my bed for no reason, and now he just left. Oh my! Tell him about what he did to your laptop. Oh, he stepped on my laptop a couple times. Really? Yeah, so... When it comes to stuff he can reach, if it's in the way, he doesn't care. He just will step over it. But he literally just knocks over all my stuff right now. But... He just doesn't care, Yeah, but so back to the story. Big old strong dude getting mad at 5'7", essentially high school for The fact that he was late to get his food, not you were late. Right. Make yeah, it make sense. And that was pretty much it. How do you call it? After that, I just felt bad. Like, I felt small, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I feel like if I was humbled, even though I didn't technically deserve it, I guess. I, I just... I don't know, man. I felt pretty bad that day. Mm. And I was scared, because, you know, the, these in these parts, it's you know, it's not a calm area. To yeah. say, uh, so how do you call it? Um, I, I left work feeling very spooked that night, knowing that I could have been killed over some barbecue ribs. Over barbecue ribs, and I, I, I get we keep saying over, but like that's how that's to emphasize how just dumb the situation is. Barbecue ribs from a pizza place. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that there's been at a different Tommy's Pizza uh, where I applied for work uh, the first time? There was actually a. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go a little bit explicit on this, but there was like a murder. Oh yeah, you were at a different Tommy's Pizza, and so it was dubbed as the Tumby's Massacre, even though it was just one person, unfortunately, who died. It was at a Tommy's Pizza. I don't know, man. It seems like all Tumbies aren't safe. Uh, no, nowhere is safe around those areas. It just lets me know, you know, if I ever see a Tumbies pizza, I know to get out of that area. Exactly. But, I mean, other than that, I, I, it wasn't that bad in terms of um, the situation at hand. It could have gone way worse. Mm -hmm. But, uh, thankfully, it, it was just, I guess, we you got a bit angry. Which is understandable, I guess. But on a Tuesday night, I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. Speaking of Tuesdays, Tuesday was my first official day of school, or of spring quarter. Yeah, how is that going? Uh, it's pretty well. One of my classes is asynchronous. Right. Meaning the work's just uploaded, and we gotta watch it and do the work. You know, and only show up to the discussion section. Right. And then I have one class which happens today, and it's similar to the class I took last quarter where it's a three hour lecture. Right. And stuff. Uh, but I really, I really like the class, even though it's like super long lecture. Right. And uh, I got an A on because it's a continuation, like it's a like three part. Like class, I guess you could say. You know how they have the A, B, Cs of some classes. Yeah. So it's like a continuation. I wasn't. I didn't take A because I didn't even know about the class until winter quarter when I took the B version, and I got an A huh. in that class. And then so I decided to take the continuation this quarter. Right, right, right. And then there was another class where it was looking like it was also going to be a, another three-hour lecture, but. When we met with the professor, he said it's only going to usually go about an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, but like three hours, dude? Yeah, it's pretty tough, especially because for this class, it's like a lot of it is just she's showing like slides, but it's not like she's like just reading outside. It's that it's a picture. It's pictures of different like artists and her artworks. And like she's just like going into detail, but which is why, you know, you kind of have to show up for the full lectures and uh, yeah, then you pay attention because it's not like you know you can go back and look at the slides 
and understand what happened during the class. Oh, right. She does. They do record their lectures and upload them there, so you could do that. But uh, what's it called? Uh, it's kind of vital to be there. You can't just like look at the slides and be off safely because you need to be there to hear her explanation of uh, what's the meaning of each picture artwork on the slide and its connection to whatever topic we were talking about today. Of. Yeah. But, but like, how do you call it? Oh yeah, my bad. I was just gonna say. Other than that, I've been doing pretty well for my first week. Seems like I'll be able to handle it and still have t- free time. Wait. So how how's your schedule looking like then? Like like for a Monday, it's like one hour. I mean, one class, two classes worth three hours each, or so. Monday, no class. Uh, no class. Okay. Tuesday. I have a discussion, you know, like the discussions where you meet with the TAs. Yeah. I have that in, like, the late afternoon. Wednesday, I have a discussion, like, around noon. Uh Thursday, I have uh, one of my classes. Right. And then Fridays, I have the three-hour lecture class. And then in the afternoon, I have... uh, Another one of their discussions for another class meeting with the TA. And, yeah. And other classmates and stuff. And that's about it. Because the asynchronous class, if it wasn't asynchronous, it would be on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning. But since it's asynchronous, I don't have to wake up early for any classes. It's only Fridays. Right, right, right. Oh, man. Dude, that sounds like... That's, that, dude, that, 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 that's stressful, dude. I can't imagine staying wake up for three hours. And be able to retain every bit of information within three hours. Yeah. Like, like one hour class is already tough in terms like, like, morning classes or, like, night classes. Yeah. Like, but like, three hours? No. That's why the discussion for that class helps a lot because, uh, for the most part, we just go over, like, anything that, like, essentially was vital from it and needs to be discussed. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Oh, interesting. But, and uh, this is your final your final quarter, right? Yeah, final quarter, and, and then first year of college done. Well, when when does school end for you? First week of June, I believe, because oh. I know one of my finals is on June seventh. Oh, okay, okay. So, oh, that's technically second week of June. So, okay, I guess. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. Cause I end around May fifteenth, technically. Like, like instruction ends May fifteenth, right? And then it's on to like final exams. But I'm not sure when they're actually gonna be uploaded. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like it's like those situations where like you finish the exam and you're completely done with school. Yeah. But, like I, I, I only wish we did this in person. Cause like imagine like all that hard work you did, and you know you like right in the final test answer. You turn it in, and you're literally home free for an entire, like, what, two months, I guess? Yeah. And, you know, that, that, that man. What would you do if, if we were in person and you just finished class? Would you just celebrate, go home, go to your dorm? Uh, I mean, I, I'm a commuter, so I'd probably go home, but I usually what I do is uh, I'd probably just stop somewhere to eat, you know, as a little treat. Yeah for that because I mean it's either that or I go home and I say or no 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 I, I, I usually do it like the eat eat something right right and then later on when I see what my grades were if I got like a good grade then uh I essentially use that to trick myself into saying you know what finally you know like have you ever like sat there debating over if you should buy something for like months on months yeah, yeah, yeah. So, usually, I'll be debating on buying something, and then when I look at what grade I got, or like when I just feel like feel good about finishing, you know, a quarter or something, I'd go and end up buying something that I'd have been putting off for months and use that as an excuse. Ah, uh, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, how do you call it? What, what, what would I do if I was all the way in Berkeley, dude? 
I'd have to go back home. Just go home, go bed. Go home, go bed. Bro, imagine if you were at Berkeley, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, the cat uh, screwing up your TV. That's true. But then I, but I mean, I'm not sure if they allow you to like throw in like every, like anything into your dorm, right? Yeah, there's some <laughs> limitations. You can't, just, you, you can't just throw in a you know an 80 inch you know LCD LCD oh OLED TV into your room, right? Yeah, because I know there's some dorms that don't even let you use extension cords. Really? Wait, yeah. what if you could throw in like? Could you add in like your own Wi-Fi? Because I'm pretty sure like like school Wi-Fi on its own is like horrible because many students are using it at the same time. I think they allow you to. Hmm. I feel like I, I think that I've read somewhere where like some schools like it's illegal or not illegal. It's just against the rules, just to have your own Wi-Fi router. Mm, yeah, like, I, like some students like find a way to like how do you call it to, like like how do you call it uh, like backdoor their way into it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. by simply renaming the Wi-Fi router into like a school name like like classroom or something like that and you know, they just keep it private and that's it mm-hmm. yeah no I've heard some places don't even allow uh, extension cords like I said because of uh, I guess the power usage Oh, yeah, that's true. Because, like, everyone's using power at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay. They, they, they got a point there. Hmm. It's going to be real weird once everything opens up and going back on the campus. Yeah. Like, the biggest thing I've wondered is uh, how do discussions work in, uh, like, in essentially real life? Right. Yeah, because uh, like I can I cannot imagine like going into a class, and then in the middle of the class, just separating into different like groups within the classroom, and then coming back. Yeah, or like, I, like, yeah, having to go back like late in the day to uh, just, just like, for like an hour bunch. just to like discuss with a bunch of people, you know? Yeah, especially like for commuters, it's like, what if you like? live pretty far away you know you're gonna yeah, exactly. force yourself to go all the way back that's why I wonder if it's like I wonder how it is you know? yeah especially because for the most part I've never really heard I never even heard of it until online school yeah for discussion sections yeah. I thought it was just a lecture and you just you know you finish your lecture your one hour two hour lecture and you just go home yeah I never. Like, what you I heard. I've heard people say like going to TAs for help and like meeting with them, but I've never heard of like right. like this type of stuff. You know, exactly. It'll be real confusing once we go back, bro. The biggest confusing thing for me is finding everything because now you're gonna instead of just simply clicking on a Zoom, you gotta go find a whole classroom and w- figure out which buildings they're in. True, that dude. Oh man. And then you, you're gonna have to move all the way out there. Honestly, I don't. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it. Like going, going in person. Only because I feel like it'd be too late for me. If that makes sense. Because mm. like I, I was completely prepared going in, like to go in person. How do you call it? Um, going in person last year, like like first year, of, like walking into Berkeley. But now that we go, on, we went an entire year. I already pretty much conformed, and like you know. I'm stable with the with the, the online stuff, even though I kind of hate it. Still, mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of too late for me to try to immediately change into like in person learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess we all gotta adapt to you know new stuff. Mm-hmm. But like in terms of school, you know, I gotta move. I gotta buy a new bed. I'm gonna have to buy a new like television. Maybe maybe buy a projector or whatever. If the, those things work. I'm not sure if I can bring the PlayStation 5 because my brother plays on it more than I do these days. Unfortunately. Um, and all that stuff, too. It's going to be a lot of tough uh, decisions. Yeah, I don't even have Berkeley gear. I don't have any Berkeley sweaters or anything like that. That's even more money down the drain. Unless I just wear a regular shirt, but then again, you know, I guess people might complain about school representation or whatever. You know what I'm um, stated at? What's up? 
You know what I say to that about school representation? No. Who cares? No, true that. I mean, think about it. Did we even care about school representation in all our other schools? No, not really. You got a point. I mean, simply think about it this way. We went to we went to to schools with uniforms for seven years in a row. And not once did we enjoy being in those uniforms. True that. And that's like we would just, cherish, that, we would cherish the dudes. I mean, well, that's I mean, just because we didn't like uniforms. No, no, no. I'm saying we would cherish the days when they were ge- when they gave us like a free a free pass, like to wear anything you want. Yeah. And I get the reasonings for it. You know, obviously you want to know what students are yours because it's harder to tell when you don't have uniform yeah. and stuff. And there's the whole thing of like. It's quicker because they already have their clothes set for the next day and stuff. Yeah. But, like, I mean, at least with high school, we had good colors, you know? What was it? Gray, dark blue, dark gray, and then black? Yeah, the black one was pretty nice, but I hate the fact that it would, how do you call it? If you stand out in the sun, it would absorb more heat. Oh, yeah. So, that yeah. was not a good thing. But, I mean, the black, the black was not that bad. I, I liked it. Much better than what we had to go through in middle school, right? Oh, no. Picking ketchup, mustard, and mayo. I want to know who thought that was a good color scheme, man. Were there other different colors other than that? I feel like there was like a blue at some point. No, it was just red, yellow, and white. Making us look like hot dogs out there. Oh, my. I, I think that the color scheme... Um, I call it uh, the, the the color scheme when when they when how do you, oh my god the color scheme that comes up when creating uniforms comes the idea of just simply trying to separate the students for who they are yeah but like great but now, yeah like yeah like, like, it, it's obvious you know uh, in our middle school it was what uh, the reds for the six the yellows for the seven the whites for the eighth. for the eight. But I think there's a deeper significance to that. But I think I'm over exaggerating that a bit. How so? How do you call it? Aside from identification, in terms of for you know, and for placing uniforms, I think it's like to how do you say capture the eye more? If that makes sense? Because you know, the color theory with the color red. Um, it captures your attention more when, when you, you, like, let's say you look at an advertisement that has, like, red and yellow colors that instantly grabs your, your eye. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a sixth grader, since he's, you know, small and nimble, mm-hmm. the color red would, like, instantly capture the attention of, like, a, I don't know, a TA or a teacher in case, like, they're in trouble or, like, lost or something like that. Oh, okay. Same thing with yellow. That's why they're bright colors. Mm. And the white. So you instantly notice, oh, that's a student. And it's like stuff, stuff like that. Smart but I don't man, know. Smart man. I, I never even thought of that. That actually would make sense. This is all head cannon, though. This was never confirmed. Exactly. So then, if let's say you had to apply that same logic to our high school uniform colors, what what uh, what would be your thinking for the color scheme? Okay, for that, I'm kind of. I'm kind of lost because I remember before we started, we had what the turquoise, the turquoise yeah. color. Okay, that was really, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna that. Those, that color was really ugly. <laughs> like wh- I don't know why what what they were thinking with that. <laughs> shots fired. Shots but, I mean, fired. We'll yeah. Um, we started off ninth grade with our gray colors, right? Uh, was it gray? Yeah, it was gray. Yeah, it was like a light, lightish gray. Um. Uh, I think it's like to represent, like just starting off, like gray, like is not a special color, if that makes sense. Uh huh. It's literally just a darkened black, uh, a lighter shade of black. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then tenth grade, it's all of a sudden just a, a dark blue, which I'll be honest, does not make sense. But I kind of guess it fits in with like the sophomore look. And then you have seventh grade, which is like the darkish gray. Which kind of looks cool. That was my favorite color. I ain't gonna lie. And then the the black, which like 
I, I'm not sure why it was black in the first place. I just think it like it represents like a how do you call it a sort of um how do we just say it like dominance over the other students. If that makes sense. Uh, I mean your explanations make sense, but like at the same time, I don't think that, like any of that was the true thinking behind the colors. Nah, I know. I'm just making up theories. But, uh, but honestly, yeah. I think it's just because. Well, again, other than the outlier of the dark blue, well, then again, it was dark blue, so it kind of makes sense. It was kind of just a similar color scheme in the sense that it was like darkened colors, you know, other than obviously the light gray. It was black, dark gray, and blue. Yeah. Well, hmm. Yeah, I don't. So you said the the eleventh grade year ones, the dark gray was your favorite. Yeah, sort of. It was sort of my favorite. I only I only like the color black only because um, I call it. it. It was like the cool one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, look at me! I did ten years of this. I deserve this. <laughs> and I get the color black. Mm. Or something, something of the sort. I, I don't know. I, I liked it. The best choice they made was once they gave us the black shirts, they allowed us to wear black jeans. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, no, definitely that's true. The only downside to that, we're in California, where the weather oh. is hot almost every month of the year. That's that's true as well. Unfortunately, yeah, we, we had to deal with the hot weather, hot clothing. And yeah, here we were still rocking our sweaters, too. That's true. Freaking rocking sweaters and almost sweaters in almost a hundred degree weather, all black everything, having to walk two to three miles home in that heat. What were we thinking? I don't know. I don't know why we thought that was a good idea. Not only that, but then some people would still wear their sweaters when working out. Like, why did we think this was anywhere of a good idea? Okay, that's yeah, that's true as well. But overall, like I said, I think the color scheme for high school was better than middle school. Yeah. Because it, it was a lot... It was colors that were easier to... Uh, I guess uh, easier to wear, you know? like Yeah, I, I, yeah, like easier to fit into. Yeah. And, Cause like, 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 people wear black normally. People wear gray. Yeah. And, like, you know, you could just blend they were, like, in. Like, they were smooth colors to wear, you know? Exactly. And, like... As weird as it sounds, the colors at least went well with the bottom half of the uniform with khaki pants. True that. Because, like, could you imagine having to wear the VC uniforms with khaki pants? Oh, okay, no, that, that just would have been worse. No, I'll be one. honest. I just wish they would have allowed black jeans from, like, the very start. Yeah. Because then it would have just looked better. Aesthetically better, at least from our eyes. Right, right, right. Hmm. <clears throat> Hello. Alright, but so you you already know some people will probably hear this and think like it's it, it, in a sense childish, you know, complaining about uniforms and having to wear them, you know. Yeah. And granted there's some arguments for it and arguments against it, like I mentioned, you know. But uh what about some things that people consider are childish? But aren't or like that you at least think shouldn't be considered childish or th- just don't look at them as childish. I feel like playing with Legos. Legos, mm. like like yeah, like I like I understand like Legos is meant for children, but literally on the box it says for ages from like two to what like ninety something. Yeah, and I'll do you one better with the amount of in- instructions and pieces that come with it. How is it anywhere near for children? Yeah, like uh, what the Lego Millennium, the, the Millennium Falcon, yeah. or the the Death, uh, what the Death Star? Yeah, like I can't imagine a child building that on his own. Yeah, following the instructions. Like people want to say it's for children, but uh, it takes quite like obviously like people will say, oh, you just gotta follow the instructions. That's not so simple for children, you know. Exactly. So, like, when it, when it, thousands it, of pieces. Yeah, I can see organize and stuff like that. Yeah, you gotta organize. You gotta remain focused on building it. You gotta make sure you have the time and essentially knowledge to build it. You know. Exactly. It's like, and 
Not a lot of kids have that. A lot of kids don't have the patience, the attention span, the, like, essentially knowledge to organize and sit through and go piece by piece and follow instructions step by step. Some kids can, but how, how many times have you seen, like, you give a kid a bucket of Legos and, like, they just build whatever. Like, they don't never focus on building, like, something, something, you know? yeah. You got a point. What else do you think? Um, what else would be childish? I'll, I'll, I guess. Like, oh, you're oh, 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 um, I was going to say, um, like, recapturing nostalgia, like, watching, like, old television shows, like, like car- the cartoons. Mm. People say, like, oh, you're still watching that old stuff? Like, you know, grow up and all that stuff. Yeah. But, like, you know. People have like childhoods like on screen that they watched years ago, and they just want to go back to it. Yeah. And sometimes rewatching it, you see it, and you're like, "How is this even for kids?" Exactly. Have you ever rewatched some Adventure Time or regular show episodes and just wondered, yeah. "How is this airing on Cartoon Network for kids?" Well, I think it's like I think they un- I think they knew what they were gonna do. Like it's like a, how do you call it? The thing where, at a, as a kid, you have no idea what you just watched, but you thought it was pretty cool. And then, but now that you understand, you, yeah, once you're growing up, you understand like, oh, there's like adult-ish tropes or like deeper meanings to what like was originally shown. Yeah, or like, uh, like not not like secret jokes, but like you know, essentially hidden jokes that only like the older people would understand. Yeah. Uh, you know what else I can tie into that? What anime? Oh, yeah. There's still a lot of people in this world that view anime as childish. That's true. And I, I, this ought to be a separate, uh, like, podcast episode, but I remember Gio and I talked about it. uh, A lot of anime is so much better than whatever the heck is being put out right now in Western, in the Western side of stuff, you know, like America. Oh, right. Yeah, so, you know, it's like... There's so many animes out that I guarantee you are so much better than whatever the heck we're getting out here in America, you know? Indeed so, yeah. Like, it, like there's a reason I don't watch TV anymore. It's just because there's nothing interesting. Though. Meanwhile, I can throw on an anime and be invested in it for however long it is. Yeah, like, I feel like TV shows these days, like, on Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, they're just there for the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not there for, like, the emotional value that can, like, like can, that can stay burned in like the mind of a kid, for yeah. good, of course. Like, and for like, good. Again, it's probably the thing of we're not kids, so we we can't understand why they like it. You know, right? Kind of similar like, to how when we were growing up, there was stuff that our parents didn't understand how we like. Yeah, uh, but I feel like what's like worse is like um, is when they try to follow trends, like modern trends. Mm. Uh, I think that's what like kills a TV show, like a like a like a show. Like a kid's show in, in, in general. Like, uh, like when the Whip and Nene happened, remember that? Mm-hmm. They did a whole little segment with, like, uh, Silent Toe with, like, the, the SpongeBob. Oh, my God. I, don't, no, I can't. They try and keep up with the modern times, but then, like, they incorporate it so badly that it just comes off as cringe. Yeah. Can I also, like, when, when they incorporated Lil Yachty into, uh, what was it? Teen Titans Go? Uh, oh, my God. We don't talk so about bad. Teen Titans Go here. But yeah, it, it was pretty bad. It's pretty. It's really bad when they just start throwing in random like trends just to seem like fit and cool with kids. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I guess it's profits for them. Yeah, and I get it. Sometimes you can say anime necessarily isn't for kids, which is why I find the argument that anime is childish is funny because it's like. Oh, really? So, if, if it's for kids, you want me to throw on Attack on Titan for some little kids real quick? True that. Or something like that, you know? Like, look at a lot of the animals. Like, they're not meant for kids in no way, shape, or form. But there are some that were, you know? Yeah. I mean, look at how many years Dragon Ball has been running and how many kids grew up with that. I mean, it wasn't necessarily a child's show, but... Look at how many kids not only grew up with it, but stay invested with it. And, like, essentially, it's, like, a lot of them will say it's what raised them, you know? Yeah. 
it's like you don't like you could use so much of that and like with how much people are trying to say that they want shows nowadays to like teach kids all this different stuff anime literally does that like so easily you know anime is there to tell stories every single time you know yeah you could easily use it to like you can easily use anime to start teaching these kids I mean, how many animes have we watched, the two of us, where we're like... I mean, literally, us our look, look back at our Silent Voice episode, you know, where we discuss all that it teaches people and taught us specifically, you know? Yeah. Like, I, why not do, like, either... Why not show kids or at least do a show, an anime or show similar to a Silent Voice to show kids why bullying isn't okay? Or how bullying can go wrong, you know? Yeah. Like, th- that's what I mean by, like, you can use this stuff to, like, teach kids and say kids instead of, like, bumping out the garbage that we get on TV now. Exactly. Like, I literally told my mom and dad, whenever I get my own place, you know, I'm not getting cable. Because, like, it's pointless for me. I never watch it. Not even my wrestling weekly shows. That's the thing me and Mr. Solis always say. We never watch the weekly shows on TV. We We see no point to it. We can literally, we can literally look at just what was the recap of the episode and just know what's happening week in and week out. Exactly. And I feel like that's what it is like with TV now. It's like you could probably miss an episode, look at like what people were saying about it, tune into the next episode, and it's like you didn't even miss anything. Like people complain that anime has many fillers, but like literally almost all of TV now is fillers. True, and like everything's on the computer now. Yeah, everything's online now at this point, so why not just... Or everything's on a subscription-based thing, so it's like, what's the point of even having cable? Exactly. Which is funny, because back in the day, it was you had cable, and you had to purchase different channels in order to get stuff. Yeah. And then out came Netflix, who was like, oh, we want to have all this stuff in one place. But then all these other subscriptions started popping up. And now we're essentially back to square one because now it's like, oh, you can't have all this stuff in one place anymore. You have to buy all these separate subscriptions, which is essentially like back in the day having to buy other channels to get other content. Exactly. It's all about, I think it's like, a, how do you call it? We're evolving just backwards. Exactly. Like, I, I seriously don't get how we allowed it to get to that point. Like, we were progressing forward. Literally, Netflix was like, we're going to have everything in one place. And then all these people, or all these, like, different networks and companies started realizing they could just do the same with their own content. Which I find funny, because it's like, like when what, NBC did it, right? And, like, the big thing from there was, like, The Office. But it's like... The people only care about The Office, which is why not a lot of people will sign. I mean, people did sign up for it, but like not a lot of people will because it's like they only cared about one thing. Why am I going to pay this much a month just for one show? Especially one that I've already seen. At least with, at least with anime subscriptions, you get new shows like every season, you know? But you could also pirate. You could also do that. Just watch it for free. But you, you got to give payment to the studios and creators for giving you such a gift that's true but i feel like it's better to pay them up front because i feel like if you pay them like by like funimation like crunchyroll i don't think you you know i don't think you're like a hundred percent directing all of your money to the animators true how come are they how come they're still underpaid you know what i'm saying true true All right, so we'll we'll close up real quick right here because I just realized how much time we left. I've been your host, Jack, joined by my fellow callers, Dom. 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 Thank you for joining us for another episode. And as always, if it exists, we have an opinion on it. Thank you. We'll see you in the next episode.